Welcome back, everybody. What's going on? We're playing some Modern Jund today. We've been waiting for quite a bit uh, for Mana Traders to uh, send over the cards that we borrowed, uh, but still a great service nonetheless, and I'm sure it's just because they're having uh, some availability, issue, availability, availability issues with Modern Horizons being so popular. But nevertheless, we're playing uh, Jund deck. Also, you can get f the first three months of your subscription with 20% off if you use the link and promo code in the description below, so definitely check those out. Manatraders.com. They have physical paper cards as well. So, Fatal Push, four Inquisition of Cause, like two Thoughtseize, three Lightning Bolts, four Hex Drinker, which is the man of the hour when it comes to uh, when it comes to Modern Horizons. Apparently, three Dark Confidants, four Tarmogoyfs, four Assassin, three Assassins Trophy, one Random Grim Flayer, which is interesting, two Renin Six, which is pretty sweet, three Seasoned Pyromancers, and three four Liliana of the Veils. Um, so you're actually pretty well positioned to discard lands and get them back with Renin 6. You're drawing extra stuff with Dark Confidants. Then you got Sideboard with Plague Engineer, which is great. Uh, Leyline of the Voids, which is pretty vital in this in this metagame. Uh, Ravenous Trap, also pretty vital. <laughs> Graveyards are at a premium. Two Fumbling Mages, two Collector Oofs, one Cinder Vines, and two Damping Spheres. And we're going to give this the old college try. Let's go to Modern Qs. Modern M1 Jun sounds good. Playums McPointums. And let's. Oh, that was quick. I will keep this hand. We're probably going to get a stomping ground, but we do need a second black. However, I guess we can just go Overgrown Tomb into Hex Drinker. And then we can crack this for whatever we may need next turn. Not too shabby as far as hands go. There is one Grim Flare in the deck, yeah. Do we block here? I can't imagine. Huh. They're like, eh, your guy's better than mine. Oh, we can go uh, Fatal, Fatal, we can Fatal Push and play another Hex Drinker, which is pretty decent. So now we're probably going to get uh, Blood Crypt. Let's, uh, I'm going to use a black for it instead of a red. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed that we're not playing against Burn. We just took five damage. But So it's definitely Manamorphose and Light Up the Stage and Lava Spike. Two cards were Mutagenic Growth and Crash Through. <laughs> That's fantastic. Those are blanks. I don't know if you knew this. Let's just play Tarmagizzle. Buddy, I'm doing almost as well as you are. It's Prison? What are you saying right now? What are you saying, Tuna? Crash through. And so you just basically whiffed, right? Like this, you just discarded this. I mean, you could cast this, I guess. Cycle it. Oh, that's, that's fascinating. Are you going to kill the other one, too? Efficient. That's a coefficient. Rocket sixty nine. Rocket sixty nine. 
double crash throughs. Paul is getting pistachios. <laughs> oh, Grimmy. Grimmy McGrimerson. So you're a 2-2. Two -two. Unfortunately, we don't have a fourth card type in the Grave. Grave McYarderson. So, oh, we should have done that. We should have played Liliana first, because then we can discard Liliana, and uh, then we get two more damage in. I I presume they would have actually killed this guy in response, which is what they're gonna do now. But maybe they didn't. And uh, also, Tarmogo put the damage. Yeah, this is this is just a knot. This is just a not good play, I think. Um, I'm actually just going to get a red here. We want two red for Season Pyromancer, but uh, we don't really care about double green right now. Plus, I'd rather take... I'd rather not go to nine. So they'd be at five right now, and they'd be dead on board because of the Tarmogoyf. So that's... Like, you notice, like, I mean, little plays like that, they're not huge, but they do add up, and you can definitely see the consequences in real time of uh, not playing Liliana pre-combat and discarding a Planeswalker. Oh, they have... Jedi Bob has conceded from the game. I'll miss you, Jedi Bob. Do we have anything that's good against burn spells? No, literal nothing. So I'm just going to submit and hope that we have just as good of luck this game as we did last game. I mean, I guess four Inquisition, three Lightning Bolt, four Fatal Push should be pretty good. When you play different decks nonstop, you lose those little edges because you don't have... That's true. That's 100% true. And a lot of the time, uh, a lot of the mistakes I make come from the fact that, like, when I'm playing a deck like this, this is the first time I've played it. So right now, in my mind, I'm aware of the benefits that Tarmogoyf and Grimflare will receive throughout the match, right? So I probably won't make that mistake again. I probably will. But it will be less likely, right? Whereas, like, the next time I play a deck, I'm going to go through over, I'm gonna go over those same growing pains with the deck, you know? So, I mean, that's just the cost of playing decks in the same way that I do, which is basically I'm always playing a new deck. A permanent is only considered a permanent if it's on if it's on the battlefield. Keep this hand. They call me Nurturing Pete. I'm the king of the rumba beat. And I go chick chicky boom, chick chicky boom, chick chicky boom. Also, Undrum Tuna is an L2, which is a level 2 judge. So feel free to direct all your judge questions to Undrum Tuna. Double Dark Confidant, Nurturing Pete against the uh, the Mono Red deck. Hmm. I think you're supposed to take the Pain Lands out. I agree with you. I agree with you. How many cards in this hand? Daily damage. One, two, three, four. A lot. Okay, you got Tramps. Well, I'm not blocking that guy for nothing. I'll take two damage. I have opalescence and humility, and I... Uh, uh, uh. A green would be nice here.
And by green, I mean a red. You know, doesn't matter. Jesus, Lava Dart is absolutely brutal against us. I'm going to destroy everything you love. Give me a land so I can pump this guy out of the Lava Dart range. Eh, oh boy. I guess we're getting Stomping Ground. Jesus, it feels so bad. And now we're just going to pass. Whew. Okay, well. Believe in Bob and you'll never die. To Bob. I don't know if that's true. I feel like I believed in Bob before and he was like, Nah, fuck off. I was like, oh, okay. We got Sorcery Instant Creature Land, so it's a 4-5. Oh, I guess I don't have to count it because it says right on there, but they could also Flashback Lava Dart, and then it's only 3-4. Hexstringer seems pretty nuts against them, though. I would like, um, what do you call it, uh, ways to gain life? You need to believe in him for real. Yeah, I feel like you're not putting in the... I feel like you're not really believing in him. I feel like you're just kind of... Kind of half-assing your belief. Oh, God. Six. We're at six life. Come on. Well... I'm just going to kill this dude now. I mean, going to five is probably not that much different than staying at f six. It's two spells either way, but we really... I want to close out this game. And being at... Yeah, because of Lavadar, being at four isn't really that much different than being at three. It's still two spells. So... They can go shoot us now. We attack for eight. Then they shoot us again. Wow, we just won this game? I don't even understand. What's in your hand? What's even happening? We're at five life. You had at least another turn. Either way, our deck's broken, so I guess it doesn't matter. Every deck we play is, is broken. To be fair, I did believe in Bob that game, and I'm alive now, so. Would you like to play first? I will definitely keep this hand. And look who didn't die to Bob. Yeah, that's what I'm saying.
me and Robert, we got along real good. Hey, Bert. This is old Robert Confidant from accounting. With me or the card, exactly. Nailed it. Oh, I like this frog. I want to be this Kazmina's Lazotep frog treasure. Whatever the f That's a mouthful, man. Oh, I see. I guess you're just doing some, some shenanigans. I'll wait. You never feel as dead on the inside as you do when this deck is going off on you on turn two. See that face just drop? I was just like... It was just... It felt it. I felt... I had to release from my... Yeah, the thing about this deck is that even if like they don't, even if they fizzle, they still have Gristlebrand in play. So you're like, uh, good times. Man, Gristlebrand's a hell of a drug. What's their win condition? Well, they like do some. What kind of bullshit do they do on this deck? I totally forgot the card. Yep, you got it. Boredom. <laughs> oh, biscuits. Chancellor of the Tangle. Oh, Lab Maniac? Sure. How do they... Oh, now they got the Lab Maniac mana. So they can play it. They have three cards in their deck. How do they draw those last three cards? This is something. How you guys doing over there? You guys doing okay? You guys, uh, can you bolt on upkeep? Uh, mm, uh, I can't bolt at all. Wouldn't it be hilarious if I just didn't, if I didn't tap out for this bob and I just bolted them in the, in the face? And they'd be like, oh wow, this is awkward. I'd be like, yeah, it is. For you. Okay, Laboratory Maniac.
Is there a graveyard relevant? I don't think so, right? I don't give a shit about the graveyard. I don't think we have any real sideboard cards against this deck. Actually, this card's great. Fatal push. Kind of poop. I guess Fulminator is better than... Yeah, that's probably it. <sighs> How many lands are in this deck? It's got to be like 23, right? Yeah, okay. Exaxes. I'm in. Put that dude on the top. Did I not pass the turn? In before death, turn one. Wow. Aggressive. Yeah, they just threw this one in there. It's whatever. Land. Oh boy. They can't win, right? <laughs> They're basically just done, right? Cool. Fun, fun interactive game of magic. Um, yeah, this hand's pretty rough. They kept on seven? Holy god, we have to mulligan this hand. Yeah, we'll keep this, I guess. You can stay on top. Are we dead? Are we dead? Mm -hmm. Are we dead? Are we dead, Chancellor of the Tangle? Do, 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 do. They have two cards in hand. Guess it doesn't matter when we get that Allosaurus boy. This is turn one, man. This is um, this is my turn zero. This is fucking unbelievable. I didn't get to do anything. This is so stupid, dude. Oh, crying out loud. Don't tap out on turn two? Yeah, all right. Well, I'll keep that in mind when I make it to turn two. This is my talk talk don worm. What do you mean? You mulligan? That's true. I guess I did. Dang.
Baby shark. This game alone illustrates why this deck needs to be gone. I'm not saying it's overpowered. I'm not saying it, it wins all its matches. I'm not saying it's a dominant force in the metagame. I'm saying when there's a deck in the metagame that can win on turn zero without letting you play any fucking cards, you don't you shouldn't be in the metagame. It period. Okay, so a blue deck has to have two blue cards in their opening hand. Then I guess you and I guess you got it. I guess that makes it yeah that's that's it's not it's not a matter of being annoying it's a matter of it like you're creating a deck there's a there's a there's a you're creating an experience with this deck that literally disallows the person sitting across from it to play magic a non-zero percent of time for a percent of the time and I'm not talking about missing land drops I'm not talking about not drawing the card you need I'm talking about literally not even getting a turn in the game of fucking magic like that's not okay I don't care if it's it's win percentage is 10% or 4%. Like, I don't care. That's not the point. If 4% of the time this deck sits down, it has a chance to not have the opponent get a turn, even one turn, it's not healthy. And now we get to play against it again. Oh, baby, shark. So, you play this, exile two green cards. We might as well get rid of this, because if we get rid of this, you can still do this, but then you at least have to use the Summoner's Pact. This hand doesn't seem very good. Yeah, it feels like Ryder is the correct choice there. Guess they drew a green card. Evolution and Nourishing Shoal, and then they Neoform. <sighs> so, like, let's let's be clear that I played the exact card I needed to play on my turn. I played the extent of my options on turn one. I played a Thought Seize, which is one of the best disruptive spells in the format against my opponent on turn one. And that wasn't enough because... This is really frustrating. I, although I guess neither are you. Touche. Of 
cool. I won the game. <laughs> it's like I don't even care. I'm like, I didn't win the game. I just literally... You didn't, you didn't, you didn't win the game, so I win the game. Like, that's literally all that happened. Ugh, crying out loud. Grishelbrand, Narset, even, let's say, Pierce, like, none of those are, none of those are as oppressive as this deck. None of them just win on turn one. I think they're all fine, and they're, they're all not dominant. They're not, not only are they not dominant forces in the metagame, like, none of them are even threatening. Like, I don't even go to an event and I'm like, oh no, I have to deal with all three of, like, any one of these decks. I just don't think they're that good. Thankfully, I'm around to keep him off the path of being a complete degenerate. Oh, I like that they revealed this guy, and then they're like, Botanical Sanctum, and I'm just like, whatever, dude. Nope, let's use black. See, now I'm just gonna, I feel like I'm gonna crush this deck handily now, but, like, it's not the point, though. That's not the point. Um, Let's just get rid of Summoner's Pact, I guess. That's gone. All right, so we have three of the five cards in your hand. Nourishing Shoal, Metamorphose, Eldritch. Let's take the Eldritch Evolution. Oh, we can't do it because we don't have uh because of because of the stupid damping sphere. Man, we've we've crushed our own our we were hoisted by our own petard there. Nice wet ball you got there. What is that even Oh, the, are you talking about my wet ball? Don't that's a weird thing to say. I mean, I think the question comes down to, like, what percentage of the time are you okay with this deck having a turn zero win? Like, what percentage of the time? Like, without your opponent ever being able to even draw a card or play a, play a land, you know, like... I think it should be zero. Right. I, yeah, correct. I think it should be zero. Kitty cat, pipe down. I'm going to keep this assassin's trophy up. Because baby sharks. You got it. Metamorphos are both gone. We only have Nourishing Shoal and Chancellor of the Tangle. <sighs> so. I guess that's fine.
Believe in the heart of the bobs. So this is six. Next turn we can deal uh, eight, and then we have a lightning bolt, which doesn't kill them. You got it. Are we going to be vindicated? Indicated. This is fascinating. Whatever's happening here is fascinating. Gonna be a season. Oh, it's Hexter. I was gonna say season Pyromancer. Well, we got pro everything on board, ladies and gentlemen. And they're at four, <laughs> so that seems good. Might as well play a hex drinker. Interesting. Show me what you got. Fifteen life. Sure. Chancellor, summoning pact, Allosaurus Rider, Nourishing Shoal. I almost want to take the Nourishing Shoal at this point. Then they go, Allosaurus, exile these two. If they draw the other card. So we got Nourishing Shoal, and hmm. Yeah, I'll just take the Shoal here. I'm really in the business just getting basics here, my dudes. So what is it, 6, 12, 13, 14? Not there yet. It's still one turn, so I'll keep up these guys again. Go to 7. Alright, well. They're at a point where they can't actually... Uh, they can't exile two cards and gain life. Yeah, so... Yeah, I... Uh, <laughs> No feel bads from be from losing to this deck. So we're, we're actually two one right now at this deck, and we we were managed to beat the the same the same deck once, and they beat us once. So <laughs> take that, dummy! <laughs> oh god, the deck is just miserable. Just miserable, miserable to play against. <laughs> this hand is great. Believe in the heart of the bobs. Let me close these blinds. It's getting weird. He's got electric boots. 
Oh, 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 Andy and the tuna. Discarded bolt. Dang it. It was neither of those things. We've had so many opening hands that look so good. Yeah, but I'm scared of this bird now. I'm also scared of not having removal. So now they're just going to play Kitchen Finks. Yeah, right. Can you imagine a modern deck that's like, I'll play Kitchen Finks on turn three. And you're like, well, that's a good card, but that ain't modern caliber, buddy. Pillage. Is this really where you want to be? Uh, 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 and they end up doing it. Let's take this Huntmaster. And then I just eat it, but that's better than them playing Huntmaster, so. Sure, dude. Pillage my land. You scumbag. On Drum Tuna, have, have a good night. Enjoy your Friday. All right, so you saw that everything's come down. They have no cards in hand. Sure. Know the dancers in your grand cafe. Play dark confidants all day. Whoa. Pillage is 100 times worse than Molten Rain? I don't think that's true. Have you played Modern, man? You know how many artifacts there are in Modern? <laughs> There's like infinite relevant artifacts that you want to get rid of. So do you! Oh, wow. Fucking top deck Stormbrush Dragon. That's a sweetie boy, isn't it? Next time, though. Next time on... Dragon Ball Z. Do you got to draw a card? Oh, yes. I don't know how we beat this guy. We were doing great up until this guy. And now, this guy. It's actually Mashi. That'd be hilarious. Hey, hilarious. Um, I think we just want a seasoned Pyromancer here. Let's say for every non-land card, get rid of Bob, get rid of Lil. Okay, okay. Scavenging use is a little awkward when we got Tarmagizzle. That is a lot of goifs, and there's a lot of cards that can't deal with this guy. Assassin's Trophy off the top one time. Actually, how much can they deal? One, two, three, four, five. They can deal an extra three points. So we actually go to three here. Now we go to four here, I guess. Dead to Stormbreath Dragon. I think our deck seems good. Like, I don't actually have a problem with anything in the deck. I blame being in mobile, but really, it's just my bad. 
Don't let Alabama get you down, bud. I'm just going to submit like this. I don't think Cinder Vines is super relevant. I have to assume they're likely going to try to enchant regular lands. Uh, this hand is good. Kitty Cat, shut up! God! makes me sad oh one oh my god they did play kitchen finks Huntmaster, Bloodbraid, P, and Kieran Lar. What an aggressive... What an aggressive thing we're doing here. Let's just get a red source. Stomping Grizzle. Blood Grizzle. I'm going to attack with this Tarmogoyf. What's it going to be? Sick top deck off of the Bloodbraid Elf, bro. Well, that's annoying. Look, this guy flips. Cool. <sighs> Come on, Forest. I guess this guy's gonna fight my Tarmogoyf. How close am I? Or these two fight? Or these two? Yep. Nobody is surprised by the plays you are making. Yep. 
we're done here. Yeah, I don't like this deck as much as the one I played yesterday. I feel like there's just not enough things going on, if that makes sense. Oh my god. If I really have to play against this deck three fucking times. Come on, dude. Are we are they done? Are they ending the turn? I mean they still have a gristle brand in play, so that's cool. Oh my god, I was literally going to be like, give me a lightning bolt. But now we need a red source to cast it, so... Pact of Negation. Well, let's put the Laboratory Maniac in the graveyard, I guess. I don't know if that's correct or not. I literally have no idea. The problem is if we go get a even if we get a mountain with this, we're still gonna have to take a total of three damage. It means Grizzlebrand kills us next turn. What gets banned from this deck? I don't know. 
Allosaurus Rider. Like, you can name any one of these cards that don't affect the metagame in any meaningful way. Nourishing Shoal. Like... So infuriating. I mean, if we top deck a swamp, it's actually okay. We can Liliana. Fuck. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, dear God. Just hilarious. Well, wasn't expecting that one. Sure. Why not? Well, this hand's pretty unexciting. I guess we'll take Nourishing Shoal? I mean, that's a combo piece. Hex Drinker has been pretty good. Alright, so Manamorphose is gone. I assume we played Botanical Sanctum. What did you exile? You exiled Oxidize, Oxidize, and you top decked. The top two cards, just to be clear, were Allosaurus Rider and Neoform. Like, there's a Solitaire. Like, you can actually play Solitaire on Magic Online. You don't actually have to go into queues with opponents and actually 
make them feel miserable. I voted for draft. I just want that on record. <laughs> this has been like three out of five matches. Sure. This has been fun and all, but it has not been fun and all. I agree with you. Everything you've said is correct. Let's get a let's get a blood crypt. Actually want both of these. Put any of these cards in your graveyard. I'll put one blooming marsh in there. Probably Liliana too. Actually, Liliana would be great here. I don't even know.
Holding up bold for Allosaurus Rider doesn't do anything. They maintain priority when they cast Allosaurus Rider, so they just Neoform or Eldritch Evolution, and both of them are additional costs, so you never have a chance to respond. Yep, so now they get priority again. They get to cast Neoform. And done. Seems good. Is it possible they just didn't hit? <laughs> is it possible they just didn't hit nourishing shoals? Probably not. They're trying to figure out what card they're going to discard to the other Nourishing Shoal in their hand. <laughs> oh, God. Your deck is bad and you should feel bad. Oh, God. Good Lord. Like you do. I'm not going to jump in the queue until uh, another person jumps in. Wow, nothing more satisfying than uh, dealing you three to the face when you're at two. While gaining 15 life is on the stack. Why not play a league? Because I don't like leagues. I don't really like playing. I don't like committing to five rounds with the same deck. Uh, because sometimes I want to make changes to the deck. Sometimes I don't want to play the deck anymore. Sometimes I just don't, I, I just don't enjoy it. I just don't want to jump in this queue if they're there because I'm just tired. I'm just, I'm out. <laughs> like, uh, I, I'm not going to switch to the Vampire deck. We're actually playing for a video right now, so. Queues will have this. Yeah, you're going to find Neoform in the leagues too, buddy. Just, I mean, like, it just doesn't, that, that, that doesn't make any sense. Neoform is not exclusive to, to, to the queues. And you can literally see who's going to, who's going to show up. Yes, this is a real deck. <laughs> What up, little man? Like my ley lines. <laughs> no, like, no, this is like a legit, no, this is a legit deck, man. They call it Neoform or Neobrand, one of those two things. Neobrand is what it's called because it's Neoform and Gristlebrand. Real question alert. Okay. Real question alert has been called. Is there a modern deck that you really love? I really had a good time playing the Ninjas deck yesterday. like a real good time like enough that like i i down i actually purchased the cards last night so god this 23 land hot sh this is it this is how it's gonna go i don't love it shut up god shut up you're so loud just live your life
Would you ever do a league with it? I mean, probably, but I already just did. I literally just did a video yesterday of five of five matches with it. So like, I don't. There's not that big of a difference. I don't think. Would it make the stakes feel really high in a league? I don't know about all that. Those league stakes, though. Uh, I think it feels worse to play against Neoform. I don't see Bridgevine just, like, turn one in you. Joke's on you. I got more. Vendillion Click and Aether Vial. Let's take Vendillion Click. What the hell is this deck? Vendillion Clicks and Aether Vials. Uh, we want a red source. So a Blood Crypt, I guess. And we're going. Doing the old 15 life in Modern. Is it blue white control when they have Aether Vial? I don't know. Field of Ruin's gone. What do they have? What is their hand? Real their hand. Field of Ruin, Glacier Four. Oh, they have, they still have the Aether Vial. This is an interesting choice. Yep, and the Aether Vial. Sure. Let's crack this bad boy. Let's get an overgrown tomb. Nope. Oh, we should have got a. Ah, the, this is the only blood crypt we have in the deck, which I actually don't like. Because. Uh, black and red are your 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 most represented colors with the uh, double black spells and double red spells. So it's an awkward situation where if we draw, like, we could get a stomping ground, but then we have double red and not double black. So it, there's a situation where, like, we we can't play a seasoned Pyromancer and a Liliana on the same turn. I guess we just discard. I mean, it's Fatal Push. I could care less. And we get to keep a Liliana on board. Whatever. So Glacial Fortress you played. It's a safe to assume I don't know any of the cards in your hand. Right, you guys keep calling control, but it's like they have an either vial. Sure. Oh man, come on. Look at these. Get it together. These have been solid draws. <laughs> Next level big brain deck building. It's very strange, man. How many creatures do you have in this thing? I've seen Vendillion Click, Snapcaster, both of which have Flash already. Wall of Omens was another good draw because not only does it give you another card, but it protects your Snapcaster. Oh man, that that goblins deck where they had the Aethervel on seven. Oh my god. See, that's what I'm talking about. We can't discard anything, I guess. Oh, 
Oh, oh, this card just became much better than I thought. If you have no cards in hand, you just fucking draw two? Oh, I, I did not realize that. That's nuts. Because usually, typically cards like this are discard up to two cards, then draw that many, right? So if you don't discard any, you're not going to draw any. <laughs> wow, that's bonkers. Let's just draw two more. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. What in the earth? This is not a real magic card, dude. Get out of town. Oh no! Oh, we're good. I was like, we don't have the the appropriate manas. Return a land card from my graveyard. Oh, they just concede. I guess Ren and Six is where you draw the line. Man. Oh, this card's much better than I thought it was. Good lord, man. Hmm. Well. Don't care about these. Don't think I care about these. Fulmin Rage could be decent. Like, all we saw was... Well, I guess we saw Vendillion Click. We saw Vendillion Click, Snapcaster, and... Wall of Omens. Wow. That's insane. I'll bring in a Cinder Vines. Take out. Eh, Liliana's great, though. Take out a Fatal Push. You need to investigate and find out what the vial on four was for. I don't know. Did they just leave it on four? No green is rough. I'm all in this hand. Uh, if we can hit a red source, I think this is fine. If there's a fetch land on top, I think we're good. Well, you're going in the graveyard. Yeah, I mean, with Vendillion Click, Wall of Omens, and Snapcaster, it's pretty safe to assume that they're playing Restos. Exol, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back, man. Really appreciate it. Wall of Omens, Wall of Omens, Rest in Peace, Shadow of Doubt... Path to Exile. I actually think Rest in Peace hurts us the most with this guy, this guy. Yeah, I'll just take the Rest in Peace. Which is really kind of weird, but their hand is not that... Ex they also don't have another land? I, mean, I think our hand is fine. We hit any land and we have two things we can play. I guess they're... Oh, wow, that was a really, really good top deck. Excellent, man. I'm so sorry about your hearing, you back, hearing, hearing you, you lost your job, but I'm glad to hear you back on your feet. Any land. Well, that is not a land. Get busy hex drinking, I guess. This is where they go land. Oh, they can't even go land Shadow and Doubt Path to Exile because they don't have enough mana to do it. They don't have the appropriate colors to do it. Dude, he's so loud. It's unbelievable. <laughs> sure. What are we getting here? Green? Black? Black. We got a swamp. Black means that with any other land we can cast Dark Confidant. 
green means we have to have specifically a black or a, I guess I guess black, I guess green also lets us cast anything. But like black does too. So. Yep, that's awkward. Level you up again. Next turn they're going to go path to exile shadow of doubt. Or they're just going to do it now. Yep, here we go. Cool. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Having a good time. This is game two. We won game one. Oh my god, really? We're gonna run up we're gonna run back Shadow of Doubt Path to Exile? This has gotta be a fucking meme, right? Like this isn't a real thing. This isn't a real strategy, this Shadow of Doubt Path to Exile combo. Unbelievable, man. Let's get an overgrown stomping ground. Did he say an overgrown stomping ground? Like, we're just way ahead right now, right? Like, we can just Liliana and start discarding things. Like, Hex Drinker's probably pretty bunk right now. Overgrown Stomping Ground is broken. It's it's uh, basically a, a shock land that taps for three different colors. It's pretty insane. Seems good. Seems good. So we're gonna go, we only got one green source, so we're gonna use greenums and redums. This guy. Uh, return, probably just blooming marsh here. Actually, bloodstained mire is probably better, right? We bloodstained mire, we could get another land. And then we can just play like Grim Flayer. Okay, well, we both have Planeswalkers now. Overgrown Stomping Ground taps for green, red, green, green, or red, yeah. Or black. <laughs> Come on. Learn your, learn your little lands. Seems good. It's all coming together now. How do you have a deck with Aether Vials and Teferi and Jace? The Fate Sealing Us? Interesting. We just get in there, right? Like, we can actually go bolt one of these idiots. Mm -hmm. 
So each player discards. We can get rid of Verdant Catacombs. To return Bloodstained Mire, we'll go get a mountain. Just for real, you're gonna shadow of doubt us. That's something, man. Yep, that's fine. Guess we're done. I mean, I definitely think Rest in uh, Shadow of Doubt was the strongest. Sure. That's obnoxious. <laughs> Seems good. They have one card in hand? It's second copy of Jace. Play this guy, draw two. Let's go at Teferi. Yep. So all these walls of omens have died. Fascinating. Do they get rid of their Teferi to get rid of our Renin Six? Seems good. Guess we should have done that first if we sequence that differently. Actually, we knew they were spell pierce, right? So, like, in no situation, we should have actually just played Liliana first. Because if they have spell pierce, we can play around spell pierce by playing Liliana first. Then we can activate and. Uh,
Yep, that's the end. All right, now I have a little bit better of an idea of what they're doing. Um, I don't know if these guys are great here. Just really kind of, I, I don't think we have anything great against this deck. I think we just want to rely on these hand destruction and this uh, these assassins trophies and the cinder vines and your normal Jun disruptive stuff. But scheming symmetry, I don't even actually know what that is. Uh, the is that the di the vampiric tutor for both players? What do you think of Lotus Field? Um, I actually think it's pretty sweet when you when you have like cards like Teferi in the format where you're like untap two lands and you're like i'll untap my two lotus fields and then it's like oh now at the end of their turn i have six mana and it's really kind of weird let's play first discard spell oh boy this is suspect but i'll keep it because we have two turn one plays if we get any land we can start ren and sixing Gotta be overgrown here. Yes. Inquisition. Rest in peace. Opt celestial purge. I don't think we actually care about celestial purge, but they also have one land, so maybe we just they put a card on top of bottom. They put one card on top. If we can get rid of celestial, let's get rid of celestial purge. Come on, red mana, right off the top. Just give us a red mana. I'm assuming you're opting. Oh, yeah, we did it. That's such gas. Pre-Rest in Peace. So next turn, if they play Rest in Peace, we can Assassin's Trophy it. Play Bloodstained Mire, get Bloodstained Mire back. Uh, you know, Field Lotus Field has hexproof, right? So it can't be targeted by Field of Ruin, right? Sure. So we know you have Terminus, and that's about the extent of what we know. Catacombs. Keep drawing lands. Yeah, Lotus Field is absolute shit if it doesn't have hexproof. Like, it's just trash at that point. Huh. Thank you. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him.
Tumbleweed, thank you so much for the reset, buddy. Welcome back. Really appreciate it. And if you guys haven't done so, you can definitely follow or subscribe to the channel. We stream about five to six days a week. So we'll definitely be hanging out quite a bit. We have three cards. We have two cards. We have three things on board. So we're at like five. You're at three. That seems good. Big Tefs, Jace. Jasons, McMasons. All right, we just win the game, I guess. <laughs> that seems good. Yeah, I don't know. Gen decks like this are not my style, and I, I feel like they do like they do lack a little bit of reach. But this one seemed alright, and I was very impressed with Season Pyromancer. Hex Drinker is also very good. Ren and Six is also very good as well. This deck was pretty decent. Uh didn't hate it. I think we lost did we lose one round to the uh the Neoform deck, the Neo Brand deck? And then we won the rest. I think that's how it went, maybe. But uh, either way, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments. But either way, thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. Check me out on, on Twitch, on Patreon. Thank you. All the things you can find in the description below. You can check out manatraders.com. They have a great subscription service for paper magic cards and digital magic online cards. And you get 20% off the first three months of any subscription. Uh, also, check me out on coolstuffinc.com. I had an article go up just this week about a sweet Soren uh, preview that we had at Cool Stuff. And uh, that guy looks pretty good. So definitely check that out as well. Thank you guys for watching. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. I'll see you next time.